Hello everybody and thank you very much for watching. This is me Mr. P and this is second episode in a series Proxmox Server plus Samsung DeX. In this episode I will show you how to create a Windows 10 virtual machine on your own Proxmox Server and how remotely access that virtual machine from a Samsung DeX. Let's begin. Number one thing what you need to do, you need to download a Windows 10 ISO file. You can get the ISO file using a Microsoft software tools I think the program is called. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to go and get to that page where you need to with instructions how to get the ISO done. Once you get the ISO file created you need to upload that ISO file to your Proxmox server. So to do that you need to log into your Proxmox server, select the storage where your ISO files are located, click, so, uh, click on ISO file. As you can see I have a bunch of ISO files already uploaded. Yours probably going to be an empty list. You can just click on upload select the file and then navigate to the folder where the Windows 10 ISO file is located. If you created that on a separate machine, let's say on your other Windows machine, you just upload it to your server from any, basically it's a browser upload, so you can upload from anywhere. I created the ISO file on the Surface Pro 7 and upload it that way, but if somebody gives you on a USB key, you just plug in USB key into your Samsung DeX and then navigate using a files app to that folder where the Windows 10 ISO is located and upload it this way. So for example, I'm going to click select, upload, I'm going to choose DiaPi as an example, and that's how it's going to, to auto-populate all the information, and you just click upload and wait for this to get uploaded. You can't close this window, so you need to wait. This one is taking no time as it's only 546 megabytes, but Windows 10 file is over 4 gigs. And Once ISO file is uploaded, you can finally create your own Windows 10 virtual machine. To do that, you just click on a create VM, and then it uh, automatically selects your server, give ID number, whatever ID number you want to give. I'm going to say 201 because 200 is already taken. Uh, win underscore 10, uh, you can put underscores. Win dash 10. Under ICE, uh, OS, you automatically select the storage where you want to, if you have more than one, you select the correct one. And then choose the ISO file. So I'm going to choose Windows 10. Type, you need to choose Windows, Microsoft Windows. And under version 10 slash 2016, 2019, that's the one you need to select. Under systems, uh, the graphics card default, machine, you need to choose to be Q35. Then choose UFI and then select the storage where UFI files need to be stored. Everything else by default. Under disks, obviously give as much as you, you can. I'm going to leave 32 just because I'm going to just delete this straight away after creating. But let's say 128 or 512 or as many gigabytes you, you basically have option to give. So let's say 32 is going to be for me. Under cache, I would like to change to write back and click uh, tick discard. These two options makes Windows 10 be more snappier on my hardware. So I suggest to play around with these two options just to see how it goes. Under CPUs, I'm going to say four CPUs. Under memory, I'm going to change to from two gigs to uh, 4 gigs, basically it's 4096 megabytes RAM. Nothing changed in our network because I want my Windows 10 machine to have connection to the internet. And that's it. And the confirm gives you a list what you just selected. You can take this to start the virtual machine automatically. I just like to click finish and wait for virtual machine to be created here on the left hand side. So as you can see, it's showing right now 201 with a padlock. That means the Proxmox is doing some things to this VM and I can't do anything with it. Here we go. VM is created. So once VM is created, you click on a console and click start. And right now the console will connect to this virtual machine. Once you see Proxmox logo, click to make sure that this is, is in a focus and press enter when you see the message. Press any key to load from CD or DVD. And right now Proxmox starting a Windows 10 installation process. A couple of things to note when you're setting up this Windows 10 virtual machine. If you want to use this to connect with the Samsung DeX, and what I mean by that, remotely connect to this Windows 10 virtual machine from your Samsung DeX, you need to do two things during setting up process. Number one, I'm going to show you now. If you go to install, you need to choose Windows 10 Pro version, as Windows 10 Pro, Pro version has RDP server uh, features turned on. That means that it allows to be connected to remotely from anywhere. So you choose this to be installed. And once installation is finished and during the first initial setup process, when Windows 10 asking you to, do you want to use OneDrive, do you want to use Office, etc., la da da la da da, it's going to ask you to log in with your Microsoft account. Make sure you're logging with it, your Microsoft account via email and the password. 
So once you get everything installed, everything is working. I'm just gonna shut this down because I don't need this. I have my my already set up one, so I'm just gonna spin that. So it's ID number 200 and it's Windows 10. So this is the Windows virtual machine I created just before the just before recording this video. So let's start. Here we go, Windows 10. I click on this, ask me for pin number. I'm just gonna enter my pin number and I'm inside the Windows 10 machine. First thing what you need to do, just obviously set everything up, delete what you don't need, setting up, installing, etc, etc, etc. Let's say you want, you are ready right now to do a remote connection to this machine. Click on the search and write remote access. And one of the options gonna be here, it says remote, allow remote connections to this computer. Click on that. Once you clicked on that, the windows will automatically select this option. Right now, as you can see, it's grayed out because I'm ready to set this up, but this is gonna be selected and it's gonna be a black line going around it. You just click apply and it's gonna ask you to confirm. Once you get everything done, applied and confirmed. Next thing what you need to do, go back to a search and write CMD to run a command prompt because you don't know what IP address this Windows machine received. So while inside a command prompt, you type IP config and press enter. So in my case is we're ending with 116. This is a P address of this virtual machine, which is great. I'm gonna close that. I will open RD client for Android. This is a Microsoft app available in the Google Play Store, remotely connect to Windows machines. And as you can see, I already have an Andromeda Windows 10 set up, but what you will need to do, you need to click on a plus sign, click add PC, choose add manually, enter the IP address of your machine. So mine was uh, 116, so obviously not with asterisks, but full IP address, so 192, 168, 178, 116, for example. Then click on this dropdown, uh, add a new user, set up your username, the email of your Microsoft account, and the password. That's where if you don't, if the Windows doesn't know the password, that only knows the authentication access, it's not gonna work. So once you're setting up Windows 10, make sure you're using a proper email and a password, not authentication app. Once you have all this set up, you click on the save button and you can remotely connect. I'm gonna click on that and I'm remotely connecting to this Windows 10 virtual machine. So it's inside the Windows 10 virtual machine using a RD client. And if you're using this on, let's say, 16 by nine aspect ratio, 1920 by 1080 p monitor, it's not a problem. With my setup, I'm using Ultrawide monitor and it's half of the screen I was using with the browser. Right now, Windows 10, it has this weird aspect ratio and I can see properly the start menu, the search and all things below here. And how to basically, I'm using this with my setup. So I'm gonna click on this icon at the top middle click on a disconnect all, all PCs, go and full screen this app, and then click on Andromeda. And now I'm logged in with a full screen and it goes proper full screen, no Samsung Dex bottom start menu thing at the bottom at all at the top. And I know you're gonna ask me straight away, the start menu works properly. This is literally uh, a Windows 10 machine, Alt tab, I think our tab works as well. I actually never tried. So let's open um, the file manager and let's open the the edge edge browser. Let's go like this. Alt tab, all tab works properly as well. Uh, I actually never used it, but here we go. So all tab works fine as well. So switch between. Great. And it is virtual 10 machine. If I go to uh, task manager, let's open this up. If I go to performance, as you can see, this is a, uh, the 3.4 gigahertz uh, CPU with four gigs of RAM. That's all I gave to this machine. It's only four gigs of RAM and this works great. On my main Proxmox server, I have I actually allowed eight gigs of RAM because I have 32 in another machine. But as you can see, with four gigs of RAM, it's, it works fine. It's not the best experience. It's not like super snappy, but for you to do a Microsoft Word or Excel or just do Windows stuff, that don't need a lot of power or GPU. This is perfect setup. Let's say I have everything set up. I went and uh, uninstalled all the crap that I don't need. I don't know why I need TikTok here. Let's uninstall this, uninstall Solitaire, uh, unpin this. Why have Roblox? You, you set up everything. You have your own uh, bookmark set up. You have your program set up. All the things that you do straight away as soon as you create your Windows 10 or install a Windows 10, I have everything set up. I want to make sure that I have a, a snapshot of this Windows machine and the snapshot with the Proxmox is basically like 
in the game is a quick save. You do all your things and you want to just quickly save. So I've done all this. I'm going to click on the middle button again. And on the bottom right, actually, let me make sure that you see this. If I go this way and go like this. If I go on this button and I click disconnect all PCs. Right now, it disconnected, remote disconnect, it rem I disconnected the remote access to this machine. I can close this app. So right now, I'm back inside the Proxmox. I click on the snapshots. I already have one created, but basically, it's, uh, take a snapshot and say... Uh, subscribed for example thank you and I'll click create a snapshot and right now Proxmox creating a snapshot state of this virtual machine after the snapshot is created I can go back in virtual machine and try something that I wanted to try but I don't want to mess everything up because I don't want to go through all the Windows installation process again it's like takes already like 10-15 minutes I don't want to use that over and over again it becomes so boring after you're done with this couple of times so it's it uh, Snapshot has been created. Fantastic. Now I can go back inside the Windows machine and let's say I want to try something new. Let's say, I don't know, I'm going to move the icon somewhere here. I don't know. I don't like this. I go back to snapshots. I'm going to say subscribed. Thank you. I'm going to click roll back. And once I click roll back and then select yes, the virtual machine will be shut down. The Proxmox, Proxmox will roll back to the state that it was before. And it should, I think it should start the virtual machine automatically. Actually, it doesn't. So I'm going to say, oh no, it's still rollback. It's still happening on the rollback. Here we go. And it's actually started. So we'll go back in here. Virtual machine started. Let's log in. Microsoft Edge icon is back. I wish just to delete Microsoft Edge completely, but I can. But here we go. It's, I roll back and it took me like four to five seconds if I mess something up. And once you have everything set up and snapshots done, uh, snapshot fine, but you've done everything and you know that you might need to create another virtual Windows 10 machine, you want to have two Windows machines work instead of one. You don't want to go through all the Windows setup process again. So what you need, you can do, you can create the template. Template is basically a blueprint of all the settings that you chose quickly set up another virtual machine to create the Blue, uh, template, I was about to say blueprint. A couple of things you need to do. First thing, you can't have any snapshots. Creating a template, you cannot have any snapshots. So I'm just going to delete all those. Yes, delete that. So that's deleted. And I'm going to delete that snapshot as well. Click delete. So there is no snapshots and you can't have any backups. About the backups, I'll show you in another video, but you can't have any backups or any snapshots. And now what I can do I'm going to go inside the Windows machine. I can click on here, click start, power, shut down. Virtual machine needs to be shut down before you can create a template. So this is happening. So right now, VM is shut down. I have a gray icon that says status stop. Right click and convert to template. And it's going to say VM 200, convert to template, yes or no. If you click yes, the VM will be converted into a template. And that's what I did previously. That's why I have this one here with ID number 900, as I like to keep all the templates started with the number 900. I have a template here. So let's say I am not happy about this one. I'm going to click on the more. I'm going to say remove. Enter ID number to make sure the system makes sure that you're trying to remove with on purpose, not like by accident. I'm going to say I don't want any jobs, anything. I want to destroy everything. Any All the trace about this VM needs to be destroyed, deleted, etc. We say remove. So this is gone. I'm going to right click on the template. Choose clone. Now I can choose 201. Name is going to be Windows Wind 10 dash 2. Or a couple of dashes and then 2. Under mode, choose full clone. The difference between them is basically linked clone. It's going to link the storage files configurations to the template. The full clone is just going to make entirely a separate clone of the virtual machine. With the link clone, if you have the template and you created, let's say, five different virtual machines of that one template and you delete the template, all these five virtual machines will stop working. But when you do full clone and you create these five virtual machines by a full clone and you delete the template, the virtual machines will still function with no problem at all. So full clone is, you must select full clone. Or maybe for some reason you need a linked clone, so it's up to you, but I always use full clone. Same as source, uh, this is basically, it automatically takes 
whatever hard drive I chose while I was setting up the original VM that I'd later convert into the template. I can I always making sure, even if it's one here, I'm always making sure this is selected and everything else, I'm leaving as default. So my server name, ID number, name of the VM, full cloned location, and click loan. And right now, if I open this up, as you can see here, there's a spinning wheel happening. It says VM900 is being cloned. What that means is that the template has been migrated to become a virtual machine. And I can see here 201 is happening with a padlock. Again, Proxmox is taking over this. And once that is done, I will be able to run this virtual machine. This process will take a couple of minutes. So be patient and wait. Don't rush this because you don't want, you don't want Proxmox to get messed up. So just wait until the padlock disappears and then you can start your virtual machine. Cloning process actually took longer than I expected, about five, six minutes. But anyway, I have the another virtual machine of Windows 10 cloned. So right now it's 201 as Windows 10. I can basically go and click start. And right now the Windows 10, the second Windows 10 machine is running inside my server. While this is starting, I can click on Andromeda as the server, server name, and I can see the usage right now is happening. So it's about 15, 16% of CPUs jump to 32, 33, 34. And I'm using over 60% of RAM available inside this machine. So if I click on Windows 10 and click on a console, the Windows 10 is starting. Under summary, I can see that it's using 80% of, or now it's 79, 80% of all the RAM. I click on the console and I can click on the Windows 10 machine screen inside the console window and enter my PIN number and I can log in into Windows machine. I have two Windows machines running at the same time. So what I can do, I can right click on the Andromeda tab, open a new window. It opens on the right hand side for me. And now I can go and select Windows to ID number 200 here. And this is 201. Right now I have two Windows machines running side by side. There is an icon here, which I can click and I'm going to go into a full screen mode and make sure I tick this. Otherwise, if I don't, don't tick this, I click back. It's going to basically take me back off the screen because back inside the Dex acts like a back button, not like a backspace uh, to delete or as you normally would expect with the, with the computers. I go full screen and choose virtual keyboard. On this side, I choose a full screen and virtual keyboard. And now I have Windows, Windows, two Windows 10 machines. I can do something on this side. Let's say I go into CMD and I'm say ping uh, google.com dash. So you just keep pinging Google. On this side, I can do something else and etc. and etc. And here we go. I have two Windows machines running on side by side from my Samsung DeX. It's not running on Samsung DeX, but I can control them from the Samsung DeX. And great, I can have Windows, Linux, Linux, Linux. I have two Windows machines. I can have two Linux machines, etc. etc. It's basically amazing. Amazing. All this happening while I just using Samsung DeX on my server somewhere in the house, just plugged in and just headless running, running all my VMs. And one thing, if you had this setup done, every time you do something on a screen, it sort of flickers. And that is because this virtual keyboard option turned on and that's what's causing it to uh, flicker. So if I click on anything, as you can see, it has a little flicker option happening when you click on something. Anyway, let's close that. Let's go out of the virtual of a full screen. I'm going to go inside the one of them. Click yep, power, shut down when I don't need or when I need more RAM for something else than this. So I can shut the VMs that I don't need. And this allows RAM to be used for another VMs. So I just basically shut this VM down and I just got the four RAMs back, four gigabytes of RAM back to something to do something else. So this is Windows 10 virtual machine on my Proxmox server and I can remotely connect from my Samsung DeX. In another episode, I will start showing you how to create a containers in VM for like a pie hole, how to remotely connect to the server from anywhere in the world from your Samsung DeX securely and how to control all this without any port forwarding nonsense, nothing else, just with one single app installed in your phone and uh, inside uh, one of the containers. I'll show you everything how to set up in the next video. Um, Proxmox, uh, sorry, Octopi, how to set up Pro, uh, Pro Prusa Slicer, Pi-hole, Nextcloud, and it's just limitless. You can run uh, Windows 95, Windows 95 can run on here and you can just go back 20 years how Windows 95 used to look like. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.
Bye-bye.